items. Here's your look at the Noble Collection Toys, Bendy Figs of the Batman. An authentic, intricate, bendable figure of the Batman, in his iconic bat suit seen in the Batman film from 2022. The figure stands approximately 7.5 inches in height. Before we get a closer look at Bendy Batman, let's first figure out how tall the figure stands. I'd like to as well thank the folks over at Noble Collection Toys that did once again provide this sample that we could have a look at in this review. Batman stands uh, about 7 inches in height, and that translates to a figure that's a little over 17 centimeters tall. Once again, the Bendy figure comes in clue with a display stand, although this display stand is slightly different for obvious reasons that it's got embossed to the top of the plastic, D and C. In between that, almost looking like peepers, two pegs that are going to attach, of course, to the underside of Batman's boots. What's also different about this display stand, too, is the fact that they've incorporated now a front placard. This one has not Batman necessarily, but instead his trademark Bat logo, although done here in red. I do like the, the additional touch of that added instead of just having a circular base like that. Of course, on the underside, you've got Bendy Figs, the Noble Collection toys made in China. You can take the display stand and though even Batman stands fine without it, just simply look to the underside of Batman's boots and just attach then the figure onto the display stand, attaching on both the sides. And I certainly have said this before in the past. I really like the fact that each one of these Bendy Figs have come included with their own unique display stand. It sort of keeps a collection space consistent. So if you have this one, if you have a bendy fig of the gremlins or any one of the other figures that we've already had a look at here on this channel, even though they are different characters pulled, yes, from different films, they are sort of staying at least consistent of the same line by all having the same size black display stand. I think that's a nice touch on their part. The thing I noticed, though, about Batman is there are some luxuries that were taken in his armor. Now, I don't know if this was the original concept for his costuming before it was changed in the movie. But as you probably can already see, he's got a, some additional color that wasn't there present on the original film. Picking the figure up right now, I guess we'll talk a little bit about that right now. The figure does have yellow for some strange reason on the tops of his boots. He also has yellow at the very top of his straps. Now, again, whether that was originally part of the costuming in the film, because, of course, the boots do change in the film, he does also have not any bit of the yellow that we see on the top. He has also yellow here for some reason on the strap of his arm. Again, I don't know whether Noble Collection Toys did take luxury when it came to designing the suit, or if this was the way the studio originally had the suit planned before they changed it. Because a lot of times, companies like this get heads up as to the designing of the suit so they can start producing the merchandise the figures, and the collectibles. Other than that, though, I really think it's a nice-looking representation of Batman as he appears in the film. The head sculpt is really nicely done, painted well as the lower half of his face with some additional pink added for his lips. His eyes, nicely colored here, and almost seems to be like a blue coloring, and that really helps to pop. Uh, this The cowl is really nicely handled, I have to say. It doesn't have so much the presence of the collar that he has in the film, but it's just high enough that it gives you sort of the suggestion of it. The points of his ears, though soft and sort of a rubbery plastic, slightly curl in a little bit, but it's certainly not something I can't fix. Again, I really like the look of the face. I think they handled it quite well. The thing I also like about this is the way they also address the cape. Instead of the cape being a hard material similar to his body, they actually gave him a really decent handled leather material. It's not true leather, no, but it gives you a really nice faux leather look. And the way they've done this, they've actually plugged this in. So I'm guessing he probably made a slit along the top here. Or, as you can see, there's an outline around the top of his armor. So maybe what they did, they attached the cape here, and then they took the front of the armor and basically put it over top to keep the cape in place. But it's a really nice cape. It's actually one of the better capes I've seen for a figure. I really wish other companies would have followed suit and done capes as good as this. This is a really nice material that they used. You can see it also does have a natural crimping. So it does have the sort of the flow the same way the cape would have. And it also has some decent seam lines. It's a really well-handled cape. I don't want to spend the entire review talking simply just about Batman's cape. But it's a really, it is one of the best capes I've seen for an action figure or a collectible figure like this. Now his armor 
is the same color as what we see in the film. They did add a few little silver markers here on the front of his bat emblem. I think in more in the movie, it's just an all a solid black. But like the armor's handled really, really well here. It's almost like an off purplish gray that they ended up using. His utility belt also seems slightly varied. Uh, we can move the arms out of the way because there is a little bit of a bendable wire. In fact, actually, the fact that these figures are bendable, the wire frame runs through the arms, runs through the torso, and runs the back of the legs. You can kind of see all the holes being the guidelines as to where the, those wire frames will be. But just want to move like the cape just out of the way for the for one second. You can see like he has all these additional gadgets all all around his belt. Not something that was there present in the movie, I don't believe. But it's nice to kind of see all these little gadgets that he certainly would have used as Batman is practical with all the gadgets that he has. Really like the look of that. And of course, he does have the gauntlets here. Still not really sure what these actually do in the movie. I don't think they serve any purpose whatsoever. It kind of looks almost as if he's got darts or arrows on the ends of his gauntlets, but I don't think he actually ends up using them. They are slightly a different color than the rest of the gray in his suit. It's kind of more of like a brownish gray that they end up going with. Uh, again, like the, the thing I don't think I'm not as crazy about is really just the fact that they added the yellow at the bottoms of the boots. But other than that, like I really think they handled this exceptionally well. Now for the articulation on this guy, as already mentioned, he does have all of his entire body is basically in uh, over over top. Let me just move the cape out of the way here. The body is basically a rubber frame that's over top of a wire. A wire runs all the way down here, down the sides of his legs and down the sides of his arms as well. And those aren't necessarily air holes. What they are is markers. So when they are putting the wire frame in the mold, these markers I serve as pegs and basically the wire runs around those. So it keeps the wire centered where it has to where it has to be on the figure. Now that translates generally with these figures, the, the thicker the plastic or the thicker the material usually is on their bodies, rule of thumb is the less bendable it ends up being. So of course, Batman doesn't have much bendable f action here when it comes to his torso. He does have the option to be able to bend at his arms. So you can kind of bring his arms out at about a 45 degree angle bend, and you can also bend at the elbows, and you can also bend his legs. More so, I think, from like the knees down from like instead of like the tops of the thighs. The thighs, the top thighs are a little thicker of that rubber material. So he has more bendable features, more more bendable options, basically from like the knee down, like from his shoulder and his elbow. Nothing really in his head and nothing also in his torso. But still a really nice looking Batman. Let's go ahead and get him back onto the display stand. I would be certainly curious to maybe ask noble collection toys what the reasoning was why they added the yellow like this because again like he has it in the gauntlets or not the gauntlets like the r straps on his biceps and more importantly he has it on his on the tops of his boots whether that was supposed to be there in the first place that's the way the suit was supposed to look in the film or they did take some luxuries uh, it's the only thing that's a little jarring on this particular bendy fig of batman but all the rest of it is really nicely handled, especially here we go talking about a game that one of the best capes I certainly have seen for a figure. Other companies take note. This is the way you handle a cape for a figure or a collectible. We have seen some of the other Noble Collection bendy figs coming included with accessories. I think this would have been a prime time to include some sort of grapple gun or something that he would have had in the film to come include with this figure as well. He could have had one at least gripping hand and then just, like I said, come include with an accessory. Sadly, though, other than the one display stand, Batman comes included with squat. Now, that's the only thing I really wish this figure could have also come included with. But generally, I am really happy with the way that this guy looks. He's not as bendy as one would hope. Again, the rule of thumb generally is the more the material that they use for the body, it means the more resistance there is for that wire frame inside to be able to bend properly. So in this case of Batman, he's not fully bendable, but he's bendable where he needs to be. His arms, his elbows, or at least his forearms, and his lower legs. At the end of the day, more so, I'm just looking forward to putting this guy on display because he really represents a nice looking Batman. And again, going back to the point I mentioned before, here we go talking about the same points again. I really, really, really like that cape. Not only I like the material, I like the way it's been seamed, and I also like the way it's been attached to his body. It's really cleanly handled. A big thank you once again to the folks over at Noble Collection Toys that did provide this sample of the Batman that we can have a look at in this review. What do you guys think of it? Let me know down below in the comments section. And if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing. If you haven't already done so, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, and come back while we have wrapped up the review here on the Noble Collection Toys Bendy Figs of the Batman. There will be more reviews coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.